So here we go then, what have you got in the box from Evotech? Well, it's certainly not snake skin shoes, which they may look like. So first thing you need to do is just unwrap everything, lay it out on your bench, and then just to make sure that they haven't left anything behind at the Evotech factory, go to the internet website from Evotech and just download the installation instructions. They do relate to the 790 Duke, but it's exactly the same for the 890R. And then just have a quick look with the stuff you've laid out on your bench, just to make sure uh, nothing has been left out because that will get extremely frustrating if the odd uh, washer or bolt has been left behind at the factory. So just take a few moments, have a look at the installation guide and just to make sure everything you have is correct and hasn't been omitted. I always find it's pretty good practice just to take a quick photograph of what you're going to remove. So if you need to install the OEM stuff, you have a reference point uh, to go back to. So I'm using a, a kitchen spatula kind of device. It's got a thin wedge at the end, and I'm just going to use this to prise out the push-in screws which are keeping the left-hand side cable bracket in. Uh, you're going to have to waggle it around a little bit uh, just to try and get these little screws out. It may take a little while, uh, but don't get too frustrated. The left-hand side comes out easier than the right-hand side, which is why I've started the video on the left-hand side. So just take your time to waggle these plastic screws out. They're not screwing, they're actually uh, push-in kind of screws. I'll show you in a little while. But uh, I've used this plastic device just to ensure that if I slip, I'm not gonna scratch my orange frame. So just take uh, a little time in doing it. This is one of the screws which I've removed and they are literally just push in and pull out. Once that's done, I like to give the area just a quick clean. So quick squid of ACF 50, and then just, just get a little bit of the oil in the uh, screw holes. So what we're gonna do now is just fit the Evotech cable bracket. This is for the left-hand side and this bracket has two holes for the two zip ties to go through. So just feed it around the cables that you can see that I'm doing here, just nice and carefully, just making sure you're not gonna scratch the uh, lovely orange frame. And once you're happy with the positioning of it, then you can just get the eight mil button screw and then just pop it into the uh, lower hole. Just finger tight it secure, and then just move the uh, electric uh, cables around. Um, I think one of them is a breather pipe. Just seat them uh, nicely and then you can then do the zip ties up. Just be careful though, don't do the zip ties too tight because you don't want to crush one of the breather pipes and you'll note that the zip ties have got a channel in the bracket to sit into once you uh, secure them up. So there you go, just doing the second one now. Just take your time in this so you get a nice finish. Uh, you don't have to rush. And then uh, pull it tight, but obviously not too tight that you're going to crush one of the breather pipes. And then once you're happy with that and you've got it all nice and secure, then you can get the uh, snips and give those a cut. Uh, so that's what we're going to do now. Just trim them carefully and make sure you're not going to cut through any of the electric cabling, etc. And then that's this part of the job finished. Right then, so the next thing to do is just remove the left-hand engine bolt. Just be very careful with all these bolts that you remove that you don't slip and damage, scrape the frame. So you can undo this bolt and then place it somewhere for safekeeping later on if you want to return it back to stock. So get the crossbar support piece. So what we're going to do is feed it under the tank. But first of all, just this wire here, just push it forward and then feed the crossbar support through over the radiator hose and through to the other side. Then go and grab your left hand bracket and then get this bracket and then just get the bolt that secures the bracket to this crossbar support, and then just feed it in to the crossbar support, and then just do it up a few turns so it doesn't fall off, like you can see here. And once you've done that, you can go and get the other bolts to secure the bracket to the uh, frame. So just gonna get one of the other bolts now and just uh, finger tight, secure it to the frame. Just waggle it around a little bit because the uh, part of the bracket where it rests against the frame there is sort of a, a male part of the bracket goes into the sort of female part of the frame. So yeah, just uh, waggle it every now and again just to make sure it's seated correctly. And then just put the bolts in and do them up loosely at this time. So that's two of the bolts done. Just put the third one in there. Just waggle it around a little bit so it's seated correctly. And then just do it up finger tight. 
So what we're going to do now is go around to the other side of the bike. I know the installation guide does say start on the right, but I found it easier to start on the left hand side. Uh, and this is the reason why. So again, just take a photo of how the cable bracket uh, sits if you want to turn it back to OEM. So you've got the radiator hose in the way here, and this really is a, a right royal pain in the backside. I've got diddy hands, and I found this uh, such a bind. So all you've got to do is just uh, work from side to side uh, on both of these uh, black plastic screws. As I said before, they are pull-out screws and not turn screws. Uh, I'm using a plastic bladed instrument here as I mentioned earlier on um, but if you're having no joy then uh, you can use a flat bladed screwdriver just wrap it around in a little bit of tape just to prevent any scratches if it does slip but yeah a little bit of perseverance uh, there were a few choice words when I was doing this uh, it did take uh, quite a while to do this about uh, 10 to 15 minutes or thereabouts just wanted to make sure I didn't scratch the frame but eventually I did get there but I did just this top one because uh, you can't really get in there. I did have to resort to a flat bladed screwdriver wrapped in a bit of tape as you can see here just to actually start it on its way to uh, pull it out of the uh, hole in the frame. So again just go slowly uh, just work it from side to side, rock it from side to side and then eventually it'll pop out and then you can uh, revert back to your normal tool and indeed you just pull it out with your fingers and then that's it, it's out. So this bit actually was the worst part of the install uh, but again, I just wanted to make sure I didn't scratch anything. So there's the bracket is uh, free. So just uh, pull it away and then you go again, just go and keep it in a safe place with all the other bits and bobs you've removed from the motorbike. Again, just get a rag, give everything a bit of a wipe down if you want. So it's all uh, nice and clean. And then we can start fitting the EvoTech bracket on this side where you're going to notice that there's only one zip tie for this and one hole for the zip tie to go through. Again, just feed it uh, behind the electrical wires and then uh, do the zip tie up loosely and then once you're happy with uh, that again a little bit of faff here because you are you are a little bit restricted but again just take your time and then again with the little button head uh, screw uh, just feed it into the lower hole again I've got diddy hands so I was able to uh, get my fingers between the radiator hose and the head of the screw and just screw it up hand tight and then uh, you've got to take the engine bolt off from the right hand side so let's crack on and do that and then just remove the bolt pull it out and again discard it and put it somewhere safe and a quick wipe with an oily cloth just to put a bit of oil in the holes and then what you've got to do is now just feed these two wires the grey wire and the black wire and just pull them forward of the cross bar support and then get the right hand bracket as there is a left hand and a right hand bracket and then in this this time what I've done is because it's a little bit of a faff with the radiator hose in the way limited access I've just put in the lower bolt and then I'm just gonna put that lower bolt into the uh, empty hole of the uh, cable bracket and then that way uh, as it is a little bit awkward to feed the bolt through uh, the cable bracket and then into the frame this doing it this way just makes it a little bit easier rather than stop with the top bolt and then work your way down and then realize you can't actually get the thing in because you haven't got enough waggle room so I know it's now in the hole and then I'm just going to uh, do it up a little bit so I know it's not going to pop out so yeah there's a few choice words have gone on with this but uh, this is the best way to do it by far so there we go uh, the um, the bracket is now uh, secure uh, with the lower bolt and just making sure none of these wires are going to uh, be nipped when we do it up and then just get the this bolt here put it in and again just waggle it around just to make sure it's seated correctly as I mentioned earlier on and then just do it up hand tight and then go to the top part and then just make sure that the top hole is seated correctly uh, in relation to the uh, cross bar support and then just feed that top bolt through again just doing these up all hand tight and then we'll uh, talk them up a little bit later on so again just give everything a little bit of a waggle make sure it's all seated correctly if you're wondering wondering about the wires touching the uh, engine block I spoke to some chap in Australia he's done a YouTube video of how to fit them and he's had no problems with the uh, wires touching the engine so don't worry about that they're obviously I've uh, uh, got some kind of heat rating to them. 
So final check then just to make sure we haven't nipped any of the wires. Once that's done, we'll start talking things down. I put all the torque settings on the screens as and when we go along. So starting on the top right hand crossbar support. So just talking this up now. And then we'll just move across to the uh, corresponding left hand side. And we're just going to alternate as we go down the bracket. Again, just uh, talking up to correct torque specification. And then we'll do the uh, engine frame bolts. Again, I'll just pop the torque settings on the screen here. And once that's done, we'll go over to the other side and do the other engine frame bolt. Again, here's the torque setting. Just take your time doing this, folks. And then we finally got the lower uh, bracket bolts. Again, torque setting is on the screen here. Just take your time. And then we've still got this to snip. So again, make sure you don't snip any electrical cables and then discard accordingly. There we go, that's away. And then the final thing we need to do is just the lower bolt on the left hand side. Again, torque setting is here for that one. So these small cable bracket button head bolts should be torqued to 25 newton meters, but I found that maybe just a little bit too high. So I would just tighten them up uh, snugly, uh, otherwise you're going to start to round them off if you set your torque wrench to 25 newton meters, meters, which is what happened in my case. So just be very careful when you're torquing these up. So I would recommend just doing them up uh, without a torque setting and just doing them up until they're nice and snug. So we are now on the home straight. So get the metal washer, put it over the bolt, and then get that bolt and then feed it through the head of the bobbin. Once that's done, get that white washer and then feed it over the bolt and then finally get the spacer and then slot that over the bolt and then take the whole thing over to the bike and then screw it into the hole here on the bracket and then get your torque wrench and torque it up to this particular torque setting and then adjust the writing on the bobbin to however suits your OCD-ism and then do the same for the other side as well. Well, that's it folks we're at the end of the video i hope you've enjoyed it hopefully it's not been too long for you it's the best way i've found having looked at the instructions uh, is how to uh, fit them uh, to causing you the least fuss i think they look really good on the bike if you like the video please give it a thumbs up make any comments you want in the comment section down below ride safe and i would very much appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel take care and we'll see you again soon take care for now cheerio